All right, software. So this is the video that I don't have starter code for. Um, I would recommend that right now you open up a blank editor and make it so that you can see the editor and you can see this window all at once as we start coding. Um, we are going to be learning about built-in variables today. A variable we can think of kind of like a box. In code, that box is actually a word. And we can put things into the box. Or in the case of code, we can save them to a word so that we can use and update those values later. Um, variables are a way of simplifying our code. They're a way of allowing things to vary, funny enough. Um, and they're a super useful like programming concept that I'm hoping you've seen before that we'll be using a lot this year. Um, if you haven't seen them, we are taking it slow, so we'll build up to it. Today we are just focusing on system variables, sometimes also called built-in variables which are variables you don't have to worry about creating or naming or giving values to. They just exist in the system um, and we are able to call on them and their value is able to update kind of however we want. So we are going to look at two system variables today and I actually lied. We are going to make one of our own variables. Um, we are going to do this with like one little circle as our tester, which is why there's no starter code. So once you've opened your blank editor, go ahead and put your cursor at the end of line six, and let's just jump down a few lines. As always, make sure you're inside the draw function. So right now for me, that's between line five where this curly brace opens and line nine where it closes. And as long as I'm there, I'm just gonna head, go ahead and draw a circle. I'm gonna put it in the middle of my page. So at 200, 200, um, I'm gonna make it like 150 pixels in diameter. So when I hit play, I have this circle hanging out here. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and give it a fill. I am going to make this fill magenta because it's a favorite of mine and I know the numbers off the top of my head. Uh, and then from here we're just going to explore some of these variables. So the two built-in variables we're looking at are mouse x and mouse y. And you guys have seen those before when we have had this text command that looks kind of like this. Oops, I forgot a plus sign. Plus mouse y. I always put it at 2020 so it's up in the corner. Um, and as you move the mouse around, you see numbers displaying. And those numbers are mouse X and mouse Y. Some of you have probably guessed already, but those are just the coordinates of wherever your mouse is on the canvas. And those coordinates are a number. So while we're using this text command on line seven to display those coordinates, we could also use mouse X and mouse Y anywhere that there's a number. So for example, Maybe instead of this 255, I plug in mouse X and I hit play. Now you'll see that first of all, my circle is blue, but as I move my mouse across the canvas, you'll see that it changes to magenta. And that's because this mouse X number, this first one is changing. So right now it's at 77. That means the value being plugged in in place of mouse X on line nine is 77. And as I go across, you see it change. Um, I could also use mouse Y, and then it won't change when I go across, but it will change when I go up and down, because mouse Y is controlled by the up and down movement of my mouse. So I can use these for colors, I can also use both of them at the same time. So now it changes as I'm moving up and down and left and right. Um, I can also use them anywhere else that I see a number. So for example, I could plug mouse X in here and it'll follow my mouse left and right. I could plug mouse Y in here, and now it'll follow my mouse left and right, as well as up and down. I can even add values to these numbers. So if I do mouse Y plus 150, now it's always 150 pixels below my mouse. I'm keeping it 150 pixels away. I can also subtract numbers here, and now my circle is always above my cursor. Um, you can do any type of math, you can multiply, you can divide, whatever you guys think makes the most sense is always doable with mouse X and mouse Y. Um, now the very last thing that we are going to take a look at, and I know this is a project requirement, it's going to come back around later, so if this is confusing, um, I'm not going to dock anybody points for not figuring this one out yet. Um, there is a function called random that holds a random value in our code. So to do this one, we do have to make a variable, um, which as I started this video, I realized is a little above where we are now, but we'll try it. Um, to make variables, we always make them at the very top of our code. 
Um, we make variables using this word called var, which tells the computer this is about to be a variable. And then we give it some type of name um, that the computer doesn't know yet. So I'm going to call this one random num because the computer doesn't know it. Now, after I've made my variable, I give it a value in setup. So if I say random num equals 50, actually, let's do equals 150, um, anywhere I use random num is going to have the value of 150. So if I take this 150 out of ellipse and I put in random num, you'll see that nothing has changed. But if I change random num on line 5 to 50, it suddenly gets smaller. So now the size of this circle is controlled by this variable, and I can ha have this variable change in different ways. One way I can have this variable change is by making the computer pick the number for me. And I do this with this function called random. Random is a function that takes in one or two numbers, and then it picks a completely random number from within that range of values. And I think we're going to come back and talk about this more later. This is just get our feet wet a little bit, and then we'll go a little deeper with random. Um, if I put in my random function, I don't know, um, 0 to 150, now the computer is always going to pick a random number from 0 to 150 and assign it to be the size of my ellipse. So every time I hit play now, I'm going to get a different random number that controls the size of my circle. So we can see sometimes it's big, sometimes it's pretty similar, sometimes it might be picking like 125 and then the next round it picks 126. Right now it's tiny, maybe for this one it picked the number 3. It's very, very small right now, and now it's, it's almost disappeared, so it might have been at 0. Um, but this is one way that we can make our code a little bit more surprising and a little bit more interactive. Both this and mouse x and mouse y are some of the benefits of doing this art through code as opposed to like painting or coloring or drawing in a more traditional way. These are things that we could not do with traditional drawing methods, but we can do when we are coding. So your task for today, rather than continuing to work in starter code, is going to be to take that robot that we did way back when and spruce it up a little bit. I want to make sure that you guys are using fill, stroke, stroke weight, color, mouse X, mouse Y, and then just try and see if you can get random in there too. Um, if random feels like a little bit much, give it like the best try you can, and we will come back to random when we come back and go a little deeper into variables. Uh, good luck, guys. I'm very excited to see your restyled robots. Bye.